Hello everybody, welcome back to Santa's Switch Adapted Toys. Today we are going to do, by request, the GoGo Rory RC Cory Carson. No, there's, okay, RC Cory Carson car from VTEC. And this has a remote control on it which transmits out. When you get it, it doesn't come with batteries, but you put the batteries in. And when Corey is, when you start this up, I've discovered that uh, when you power up Corey, you want to be holding down one of these buttons. Doesn't matter which one, and it helps to make sure it gets paired. Then you can set Corey down and press the button. Now we don't have a whole lot of space here so I'm not going to hold it for very long. Light comes on indicating you have battery power and it's sending a signal and Corey goes. Uh, the other button is reverse and it helps, it turns it so it might be able to bring it back, you can direct it back and then forward and again reverse. So We've got two switches here that we're going to add to this. Remote switches so that this can be a switch adapted toy. I'm going to turn this off while I'm working on it. Let's see, I can get set uh, out of the way, but it doesn't have to be completely. And batteries. For this toy, we're going to make sure we remove the batteries while we're working on this remote control. And five screws to take the back off, pull the case apart. And we pull the case apart, it's two pieces, the buttons that you push are here. You can see these go back in a particular way. This has two uh, line positions on it, and this has one. So they'll always go back in as long as you're you know, careful about doing it. We'll set that to the side. And here's our circuit board. This is where the switches are. And these are those circuit mount or uh, CP uh, circuit board mounted switches again. And on here, there are four. Uh, circuit mounted buttons. One, two, three, four. These two operate the one switch and these two operate the other switch. Now it doesn't matter as long as one of them is held down. They don't both have to be held down, but as long as one is held down the action required works. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where on here is the best place to put our cables and on this circuit board there is a lot of space this whole field all the outside of that is the common side of everything it's all the common so it's I'm pretty confident that if we can put our um, one side of our wiring anywhere on that area will be able to accomplish it. The other side of this switch is running on a very thin lead line here over to a traffic island landing pad, what do you want to whatever you want to call that right here. So this is one side of this switch and this whole field is the other side of the switch. And right there's a clear spot to solder to. So on this side, if we wanted to do it, we put one side of our switch here, the other side of the switch there, and we have accomplished this. On the other side of the circuit board, similarly, coming off of this switch, we come to a, for lack of description, better called a traffic island, a nice landing pad that we can solder to. Since this outside area is 
common ground and it comes all the way over here, I'm going to take the other side of this wire and put it over on here with, with my other one. So we're going to combine these up. You'll kind of see what I'm talking about here in a moment. So let's zoom back up a little bit so we've got the field. To do this, I got some tweezers I like to use. These are reverse tweezers. They hold on to the wire nicely. We're going to put two switches in. So I need two cables. Uh, soldering iron is set up and warm. Got solder there and we're going to scratch this surface a bit and rough it up to ensure that our solder sticks to it well. There's sometimes a coating, a clear coating on top of here that interferes and as you try to start to solder it, um, it pushes back or it just doesn't, it repels it. I guess that might be a good description. It repels the solder or anything you're trying to do. So very carefully, you don't want to scratch it off, you just want to break through that thin clear surface that I described and you can tell you're doing it because it's a it's shiny I'm going to hold this one up to the camera again in a moment once I get this one cleared up or scraped see if you can tell the difference between those two hard to tell but this is the one that I scraped over here and this one is unscraped we're not doing anything with it but I'm just demonstrating the difference between the, the appearance if you can tell that at all on there so I have found that the best way to deal with these circuit board type um, switches is to Heat up and add a dot of solder where you're going to add your wiring. So we're going to add a little pile of solder on this. I don't let's see, get some light here maybe. I'm not sure if that helped. But we're gonna we're gonna put a dot of solder on there. There is one, that's good. And I'm going to rotate this. Let's see, we said I wanted to put it here for one side. I'm going to rotate this around, get the orientation. This is right side up now. When you get these open, you'll see these, these locations. I'm going to put some solder here. See if I can get a drop of solder to stick on there. You want to be pretty particular about this because you don't have a whole lot of room to work. But if you're careful, you can heat up that board and get a little puddle of solder on it. And then this is our common, so we're going to put a puddle of solder right there too. I got a puddle of solder on the end of my soldering iron, but the board's not heated up to receive it yet, so I got to. There it is. It stayed. Okay. So now I've got puddles of solder on these two points, both here and here. And on the other side of the board, close to this switch, I've got a little puddle of solder on that dot right there. All right, going to zoom out a little bit. Oops, sorry about that. So the other thing we need to do is determine where our wires are going to go to get inside. Take the case and put it on here and see what interferes because we need our wiring up on top. And I am liking this location right here on each side of that, each side of that form. Drill through here. Drill through 
here. Read the extra bits there. Pushing our wire through. Wiring went underneath the circuit board. I've got to fish it back out. Okay, hold on a minute. Let's try it this way. Okay. Set it down and feed it in and pull it up so we can get a knot in it. So it's kind of a feed it in, pull it up a ways. So we have a length of wire inside the inside the compartment. And we'll put a knot in it. Now this one's not going very far, it's just going here, so I, this knot can be pretty close. Okay. And we'll run that back. Pull the wire back out until the knot is flush inside the case knowing we're going to go right there. This one here, very similar. I tend to make these videos just like a, a one shot and so I know there's a lot of boring material here. You don't have to watch this. You can jump forward, skip to where the actual soldering is going to take place. Now for this one, my wiring is when I put the knot down there, I need one of them to come over there. I still have lots of room. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and pull that fairly close too. Put that knot back down into there and oh yeah, yeah those wires reach okay so I, I tend to make the commons being um, black if I can so we're going to take this red one from this side I'm going to get a dot of solder on my iron Storing. Let's zoom in to watch this uh, this activity. So we've got a dot of soldering on here, and that's where we're going to put this wire to. We grab up some more solder off of our onto our iron, and a quick heat, and that is on there. Now. Soldering on these boards can sometimes be difficult, but if you can pick the whole board up by the wire you just put down, you're pretty well assured that's a good solid solder. If you pick it up and it jumps off, then, then the board wasn't heated enough to receive the solder, and that would be a failure and could become a failure very quickly when the toy is being used. This was the other side I said I was going to put one. So a bit of solder on here and a quick heat dot hold it still while the solder cools and again I can pick it up by that wire so I know that solder is good the other point that I said I was going to work was right here okay now for that one I know things keep moving around folks but bear with me here for that one, we'll need to combine these two wires and put them both onto the same spot. So, let's see if I can get lucky enough to do that. Combining them there. They're next to each other. A blob of solder on it letting it cool and again I can pick it up so before we 
get too far on the assembly let's test if this light comes on when our switches are pressed okay let's zoom out I have off camera it's over on this side of my table I've got mounted two switches I, I do a lot of adapting of toys so I just mounted two switches on the uh, use some hot glue and put them on there so they're out of off the table but accessible and if we push one button or the other button the light comes on indicating let's zoom in Okay, so off camera, I'm going to push the buttons, my switches again, and that light coming on, indicating that we have adapted this toy. So, back out, let's complete the assembly. Pull these down. And get them about out of the way. We're going to be very careful putting this back together that we don't pinch any wires. Reassemble this. Again, it's hard to make a mistake on this reassembly. Turn this over. Watch our wires. It's back together. Good. And let's. Uh, Put a screw in there to hold that, at least one. Okay. And so we don't have a system failure because of the loose battery. And let's push the button and turn the toy on. Okay. Corey Carson runs with the, with the uh, remote that came with it and let's operate it with the uh, buttons we our remote switches. There's okay. <laughs> and we now have a Switch adapted, Corey Carson. I call this move the Corey. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments you want to make, please do that. Subscribe to the channel, and you will get notified just as quickly as I adapt other toys and get them posted up on the internet. And uh, oop, excuse me, Corey. And uh, again, it's uh, it's been a pleasure. If you have something you want me to do, please contact me. Have a wonderful day. Bye.